Section 2 of Beowulf. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This reading by Tad E. Beowulf by Unknown. Translated by Francis Barton Gamere. 3. Thus seething unceasing the son of Halef Dena, with the woe of these days, not wisest men assuaged his sorrow too sore the anguish, loathly and long that lay on his folk, most baneful and burdens and bales of the night. This heard in his home he Yalak's thane, great among Gaiats of Grendel's doings. He was the mightiest man of valor in that same day of this our life, stalwart and stately. A stout wave-walker he bade make ready. Yon battle-king, said he, far o'er the swan-road, he fain would seek. The noble monarch who needed men, the prince's journey by prudent folk was little blamed, though they loved him dear. They wedded the hero and hailed good omens. And now the bold one from bands of Gaiats, comrades chose the keenest of warriors, ere he could find, with fourteen men, the sea wood he sought, and sailor proved, led them on the land's confines. Time had now flown. Afloat was the ship boat under bluff. On board they climbed warriors ready. Waves were churning sea with sand. The sailors bore on the breast of the bark their bright array, their mail and weapons. The men pushed off on its willing way the well-braced craft. Then moved o'er the waters by might of the wind, that bark like a bird with breast of foam, till in season due, on the second day, the curved prow such course had run that sailors now could see the land, sea cliffs shining, steep high hills, headlands broad. Their haven was found, their journey ended. Up then quickly the weeders, clansmen climbed ashore, anchored their sea wood with armor clashing and gear of battle. God they thanked on passing in peace o'er the pass of the sea. Now saw from the cliff a shielding clansman, a warden that watched the water's side, how they bore o'er the gangway glittering shields, war gear and readiness. Wonder seized him to know what manner of men they were. Straight to the strand his steed he rode. Hrothgar's henchman, with hand of might, he shook his spear and spake in parley. Who are ye then, ye armed men, mailed folk that yon mighty vessel have urged thus over the ocean ways, here o'er the waters? A warden I, sentinel, set over the sea march here, lest any foe to the folk of Danes with harrying fleet should harm the land. No aliens ever at ease thus bore them. Linden wielders, yet word of leave, clearly ye lack from clansmen here, my folk's agreement. A greater ne'er saw I of warriors in world than is one of you, yon hero in harness. No henchman he worthied my weapons, if witness his features, his peerless presence. I pray you, though, tell your folk in home, lest hence ye fare suspect to wander your way as spies in Danish land. Now, dwellers afar, ocean travelers, take from me simple advice. The sooner the better. I hear of the country whence ye came. 4. To him the stateliest spake in answer, the warrior's leader, his word hoard unlocked. We are by kin of the clan of Gaiats, and he ye locks own hearth fellows we. To folk afar my father known, noble Atheling, edge Theo named. Full of winters, he fared away, aged from earth. He is honored still through width of the world by wise men all. To thy lord and liege in loyal mood, we hasten hither. To Halafdena's son, people protector, be pleased to advise us. To that almighty one come we on mickle errand. To the lord of the Danes, nor deem I right that aught be hidden. We here thou knowest, if sooth is the saying of men, that amid the shieldings a scathing monster, dark ill-doer, in dusky nights, shows terrific his rage unmatched, hatred and murder. 
to Hrothgar in greatness of soul would succor bring, to the wise and brave may worst his foes, if ever the end of ills is fated, of cruelest contest, if cure shall follow, and the boiling care waves cooler grow, else ever afterward anguish days. He shall suffer in sorrow while stands in place high on its hill that house unpeered astride his steed the strandward answered clansmen unquailed the keen-souled thane must be skilled to sever and sunder duly words and works if he well intends i gather this band is graciously bent to the shilding's master march then bearing weapons and weeds that way i show you i will bid my men your boat meanwhile to guard for fear lest foemen come your new tarred ship by shore of ocean, faithfully watching till once again it waft o'er the waters those well-loved thanes. Winding-necked wood to wetter's bounds, heroes such as the hest of fate shall succor and save from the shockek of war. They bent them to march, the boat lay still, fettered by cable and fast at anchor, broad-bosomed ship, then shone the boars over the cheek-guard, chased with gold, keen and gleaming, guard it kept, or the man of water, as marched along heroes in haste, till the hall they saw, broad of gable and bright with gold. That was the fairest, mid-folk of earth, of houses neath heaven, where Hrothgar lived, and the gleam of it lightened o'er lands afar. The sturdy shieldsmen showed that bright burge of the boldest, bade them go straightway thither. His steed then turned, hardy hero, and hailed them thus. "'Tis time that I fare from you, Father Almighty, in grace and mercy guard you well, save in your seekings. Seaward I go, gainst hostile warriors hold my watch." Five, Stone bright the street, it showed the way, to the crowd of clansmen. Corselets glistened, hand-forged, hard, on their harness bright. The steel ring sang as they strode along in mail of battle and marched to the hall. There, wary of ocean, the wall along they set their bucklers, their broad shields down and bowed them to bench. The breastplates clanged, war gear of men, their weapons stacked, spears of the seafarer stood together, gray-tipped ash, that iron band was worthily weaponed. A warrior proud asked of the heroes their home and kin, Whence now bear ye burnished shields, harness gray and helmets grim, spears in multitude? Messenger I, Hrothgard's herald, heroes so many, ne'er met I as strangers of mood so strong. Tis plain that prowess not plunged into exile for high-hearted valor. Hrothgar ye see. Him the sturdy in war bespake with words, proud earl of the wetters answer made hardy neath helmet he a locks we fellows at board i am beowulf named i am seeking to say to the son of halaf de Nuh, the mission of mine to thy master lord the doughty prince if he deign it all grace that we greet him the good one now wolfgar spake the wendell's chieftain whose might of mind to many was known his courage and counsel the king of danes the shilding's friend i fain will tell the breaker of rings, as the boon thou askest, the famed prince of thy faring hither, and swiftly after such answer bring as the doughty monarch may deign to give. Hide then in haste to where Hrothgar sat, white-haired and old, his earls about him, till the stout thane stood at the shoulder there of the Danish king. Good courtier he! Wolfgar spake to his winsome lord, Hither! have fared to thee far come men o'er the plains of ocean people of Gaiatland, and the stateliest there by his sturdy band is beowulf named this boon they seek that they my master may with thee have speech at will nor spurn their prayer to give them hearing gracious hrothgar in weeds of the warrior worthy they methinks of our liking their leader most surely a hero that hither his henchman has led End of section two. Recording by Tad E.